fourth grade. This is Dr. Mutchler with your Friday SEL lesson. I hope you're all staying happy, safe, and healthy and enjoying time with your family. Even though it's hard to stay shut in, isn't it nice to be able to spend some extra time with your family and do things that you normally don't have the time to do? I know that's been the upside for me, spending more time with my family. Before we left for our stay at home, we were working on calming down skills. We spent probably two months on those skills. I hope you remember them. I hope that you've used them over the last several weeks, especially when you were feeling stressed out or, or worked up in some way with something that was upsetting you, that you were remembering to tell yourself to calm down by starting by just telling yourself to stop thinking about how you feel. Using those calming down skills that we talked about, take those deep breaths that calms your brain. Count, that helps you distract yourself from any kind of bad choices that popped into your, your mind when you were worked up with your strong feeling. And always be a coach to yourself and use that, that positive self-talk. Tell yourself it's gonna be okay, you can get calm, you can work through it, you can do it. Those things really help you calm down to a place where you know that your thinking brain is now ready to go and work things through appropriately. Remember when you're all worked up, your thinking brain is, is fuzzy. It's not working very well. And we need our thinking brain to work through situations. We're going to continue to leave that learning poster up because calming down skills are a really important set of skills to continue to use when we do our next set of skills that we're gonna start learning. And that is problem solving skills. And that's what this learning poster is showing us are the four steps to problem solving that we'll be working on starting today with an overview or introduction of the skill. And then the next several lessons, of course, will focus on problem solving. But calming down, that's an important part of problem solving. If it's a big problem and gets you upset in some way, remember, you have to calm yourself down so you have your thinking brain. And problem solving, it's all about using your thinking brain. So if you're all upset, you will not be able to problem solve well. So they go together like two puzzle pieces. Always remember, before we do good problem solving, we must stay calm. So I'm going to explain to you the four steps of problem solving. These hopefully are somewhat familiar as you've learned these in third and second and first and even kindergarten. And maybe it'll be familiar as I talk through it. But there are four things to do. And they try to, through the poster, help us remember that there are four things to do by just remembering the word step. Like there's four steps. The first one is say the problem. We wanna see the problem without blame. I think, I think this is the trickiest step to get through. And if we can do well in saying the problem without blame, I think the other three steps just fall into place easier. What they mean by um, without blame is this. When something goes wrong, and that's really what a problem is, something isn't going the way we want it to, we often want to just blame. Blame someone else, blame something. But if we stay stuck in blaming, then we'll stay stuck in the problem. We need to move past blaming. We need to avoid words that are extreme, like always and never. And when speaking to a person, if you start a sentence by saying you always or you never, well, that really is setting up for a blaming statement, which really makes that problem solving process more difficult. No one wants to listen to being blamed. So there is a question, I call it the magic question. And I want you to remember this, ask yourself, what do I want or need? What do we want or need? in this situation. If you can think of that question, that is usually a very helpful way to say the problem without blame. All right, once you've successfully worked through us, then you move to T, where you'll think of solutions. A solution is what we use to fix a problem. This is a brainstorming step in our problem solving process. 
Think of as many solutions as you can. Don't worry so much if it's going to be the best solution or not. Just come up with lots of different ideas. Our goal is to find a solution that's safe and that'll work and is respectful and people feel it's fair and they feel good about it. And we'll figure that out in our next step called E, explore the consequences. This is the if then step. If we do this, if I do uh, this solution, then, then what would happen? Hopefully it'll be safe, respectful, fair, it'll work and everybody will feel good about it. And P of course, after we've sorted the, the different ideas out, the, the ones we think that are good, the ones that we think no aren't so good, we'll toss those aside. We're gonna pick the best solution. Now, I think maybe the best way to really understand these four steps of problem solving is to see them put into action. I'm going to show you our learning video now of two students who are not working together very well. And by using the problem solving steps, they're gonna be able to work through this situation successfully, even though in the beginning, they're not doing so well. Let's take a look. It's my turn. Can't you just wait a few more minutes? I'm trying to finish my project. It won't take very long if you stop bugging me. No way, it's my turn. Come on, you can finish later. I'm busy later. Besides, you're not even gonna work on anything important. The game is important to me. See, you're just wasting the time that I could be finishing this report. You're wasting my time that I could be playing the game. Come on, it's my turn. Just let me finish. You're always hogging the computer. You're always getting on my nerve. Hey, hey, what's going on here? He's not letting me finish my report. She's hogging the computer. It's my turn. Could you use a different computer. All the other ones are being used. Okay, I think you both need to calm down so that you can try to solve this problem. All right, that's better. Now. What's really the problem here? And remember, let's say it in a way that doesn't blame the other person. All right, boys and girls, let's see how they work it out. All right, that's better. Now, what's really the problem here? And remember, let's say it in a way that doesn't blame the other person. Okay, well, we're supposed to be sharing this computer. And we both want to use it now. Okay, good. You're supposed to be sharing the computer and you both want to use it now. Go over to the problem solving corner and walk through the rest of the steps together. Okay, let's see. Think of solutions. What are some solutions that are safe and respectful? You could wait until I'm done. You could let me have my turn right now. Okay, let's think of the consequences of either of these solutions. What's gonna happen if we choose one of those? One of us is gonna end up feeling angry or cheated. Yeah. Okay, let's go back to thinking of solutions. I guess I could take a break, do some research in the library, then come back and finish later, but I really need to finish today. I suppose I could give you some of my time. If I can just have 15 minutes, you can have the other 15 minutes of my time for your paper. Okay, what are some of the consequences of those solutions? Well, I would lose a little writing time, but at least I wouldn't be wasting my time arguing with you. And it can only help to get a little more research from the library while I'm waiting. Yeah, and I'd really like to check on my game, but your paper is more important, so I should probably give you some of my time. And I can give you some of my time next week. Yeah. Well, I hope that story helped you see the four steps of problem solving put into action and how what started off to be, you know, two kids arguing turned out to be where they were respectful, 
and listen to one another and we're able to work it out successfully. We'll continue working on this skill as we move through the month of April. So between now and next time, I hope if a situation comes up where you are looking at a problem, that first of all, you stay calm. And then remember STEP, the four steps to problem solving. Now, before I close, there's just a few things I would like to say. In addition to the video, I will be posting some worksheets that go along with this lesson. And I hope you will take a look at those and maybe spend a few minutes working through them because it'll give you a clear understanding of our four steps of problem solving. And um, even though we're not together at school, I'm still here for you. If you would like me to give you a call, check in with you, or if you have questions, then please give me an email. I check my email several times during the day. If you just let me know that you would like me to call you or email you back, please do. My email is lmutchler at byron226.org. That's L-M-U-T-C-H-L-E-R at byron226.org. I look forward to hearing from you and I really look forward to giving you your lesson next Friday on problem solving. Take care, stay happy, safe, and healthy. Bye.